you've been a Hollywood insider for so long, yet you've been vocal for so long. I mean, how challenging is it to see your colleagues across Hollywood lacking for the Obama administration when they have so much power and influence that they could single-handedly shape the dialogue when so many people are watching them? Well, uh, I think that, you know, this is a culture of fear, and um, nobody's more afraid than people in Hollywood. They're afraid that they'll drop out of the top, you know, they're afraid that they'll drop from the bottom of the pyramid, maybe to the middle of the pyramid. But you know, they they they're the ones. Uh, Hollywood is the is the one that keeps all this power structure and all this culture of racism and sexism and uh, and classism and genderism and all of it in place. They continually feed it, and they make a lot of money doing it, and they do it at the behest of their masters who run everything. So, you know, they're not going to get brave enough to do that. I mean, I think that there, there aren't many of us who, um, who are brave enough to do that. And I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I can do it. And I feel that I do it on behalf of uh, many people in Hollywood, too. I, I go to Hollywood parties or, you know, occasionally I go to Oscar parties and things like that. And people, big stars, people will grab me by the arm and take me aside and say, I just want to thank you for the <laughs> things you say. And it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. Um, you know, and, and it's a, a big culture of uh, mind control too. MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If, if you don't know, Google that and look into it. Well, we've talked about Operation Mockingbird, MK, my, MK Ultra mind control stuff from, I mean, this goes back decades and decades. But Roseanne, I mean, do you know people have been blacklisted? I mean, is it just kind of a self-censorship in Hollywood or do people actually get edged out if they are too much against the grain? Um, yeah, it's self-censorship after a while, but it's not just a crazy self-censorship. It's self-censorship because it, it, there, there's actually a danger that you will never work again. And uh, people know it. They, they, everybody has friends that it happened to, that maybe you said too much or maybe you were too vocal on, on, uh, on uh, unpopular issues. And it's funny because it doesn't matter if two years later, I find this a lot, that two years later, those unpopular issues become very mainstream. They still don't forgive the first person who does it. And uh, that's kind of been my story there. When you're first, you're um, you know, going to be vilified despite the fact that two years later everybody's saying what you said. You're still going to be vilified because you dared. And you know, uh, you know, like they say, the Chinese, uh, you know, the Chinese have a, uh, a myth or a saying that says that the nail that stands up is hammered down. And that's how it is here and everywhere in the world. Right. You know, you don't really want to put yourself at odds with, with people who um, decide your future and and pay, you know, for your uh, work. But sometimes you have to. And, and I was very lucky that I had a successful show that made me uh, a, lo a lot of money and so that I can do that. And I feel that I owe that to the people I, I came from to say those things that maybe they can't say because they're afraid they'll be fired or they're afraid even that they'll be put in jail or whatever. Um, I'm going to do it because why not? I know that you were also a supporter of Occupy Wall Street, which unfortunately was violently suppressed by militarized police forces all across the country. And Roseanne, I tell people that everything we do every day is political. I mean, every action we take is a vote, essentially. Any more words of advice you can give to people who are watching this and saying, you know, there's nothing that can be done and we don't have a voice? Well, I'd say that, that, that that's not true. There's so much that can be done. and. Don't stop now because we've put a crack in it and now the light will get in. So don't stop now, whatever you do, don't stop. And you know, they talk about Occupy Wall Street and this and that and the other, but you know, it needs a reboot. Like everything having to do with resisting a country being owned by banksters and both parties of its government being owned by banksters. But there's no way we can turn our back or quiet down now. It'll only get worse.